Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is part four of my video series where I'm taking you guys through how to approach a technical UX interview. So in part three, we translated a low fidelity sketch into some wireframes. So that's what we're looking at here. So we designed a landing page for this video course, as well as a hover state, which reveals the lessons within each topic. And then we also designed the main kind of video dashboard screen. This is gonna be the main screen that the user is gonna be interacting with. So we have this left rail and we have the name of the topic here as well as their progress within the topic. So this user has completed three out of the five courses within the topic. We also have each um, lesson within that topic here and the different states. So basically we have like this um, active state, right? So this is the lesson that the user is currently working. Um, and you see we have the circular progress indicator just to show, you know, we're, we're partially done with it. We've watched some of this video. Um, whereas this guy we haven't started yet, that's why there's no progress indication here. And these guys, we have a different vi visual treatment. Uh, we have this check mark just to indicate that the user has completed these courses. Um, and one of our requirements said that we can work in whatever order we want. So that's why like, you know, these guys are done. These guys are finished even though they're at the bottom. This, let's just pretend this user has worked in just a pretty random order, um, essentially. So on the right side, we have the actual video. And here's something I did in the meantime, um, while you guys were not watching, um, I added this little overlay state. So this is to indicate how a user would switch between topics. So we have this little drop down switch here. So what I was envisioning is the user would just click on this down arrow, which would reveal all the other topics within the course. Just a quick, um, quick way to switch topics. So this is kind of what we did in advance. And I know we didn't address all of our requirements from uh, part one. But that's what I'm going to attempt to do now. I'm actually going to add some motion design to kind of increase the fidelity of this and help orient our user kind of through this digital product. So the first thing I want to do is create a link from the landing page to the hover screen because that's going to simulate a hover interaction. So let's select the first topic. Let's hit C to connect to the hover artboard. We're going to trigger this with a mouse over. So to get to the mouse ones, you got to make sure you have this click selected. And we're going to do mouse over to get here. And we can actually just leave this on instant just because it's a hover interaction. I don't really need this to take a lot of time. Usually you want these hover interactions not to take a lot of time. And actually, the longer they take, the more it actually detracts from the user experience. Usually I would probably limit it if you're going to use motion, limit it to like 0.2 seconds max. Um, but I'm just going to use instant here. It's going to work just fine. And then we're going to hover out to go back to landing. So we'll do a mouse out. And again, we'll use instant. So we can just preview this now. Cool, so we can hover over that topic and the lessons appear on hover. And then we hover out to get back to the original state. The next interaction that's gonna occur is a user is gonna click on one of these topics within this course, and they're gonna be taken to the video dashboard with that topic kind of pre-selected here. So let's just have the user click on that same one that they just hovered over. Um, but before we do that, I want to think about how exactly I want this transition to occur. So I'm going to be adding motion here. And I should say that if this was kind of a um, technical UX interview, you probably wouldn't be expected to be adding motion at this stage of the game, um, especially since we're delivering a low fidelity prototype, right? Like motion is usually a higher fidelity thing that you kind of add at the end, even after like all the visual design is done. Like we haven't even done visual design. However, um, if this is something that you know you're good at and you know how to do and you have a tool such as studio or a flinto or a principal or some of these other kind of animation tools you might as well show the interviewer that you're capable of doing this stuff like it can't hurt it can only kind of help you in these interviews it just shows you you can own more of that ux process but to backtrack so we want to transition from this screen to this screen um, but because we're using studio right the way studio animates and i've said this hundreds of times in all my other videos is that Studio is gonna look for similar elements on the different screens and animate the difference between them. And if we know we wanna be animating certain elements, they actually have to be on both screens so we can customize the animations between those elements. So just looking at this screen and this screen, I'm already thinking about kind of the differences in these states. So I'm looking at this left rail here and I'm thinking I want the left rail to kind of come in from the left so it's gonna move from left to right once we get here. Um, that's typically how I've seen that interaction occur. It's like, I'm, I'm trying to think like UX best practices here. Like 
you know, some inter interfaces have like a hamburger menu and the user will click on that hamburger menu and the menu will kind of fly in from the left. It's kind of a similar idea here. So I'm going to play with that. So because of that, I'm going to select all of these elements on the left rail, except for that logo goes here, like top section. So I'm going to select all those and hit command G to group them. I'm going to hit command C to copy and paste onto this screen. I'm going to bump it down in the layer list just so it's behind that. Oops. I want it behind this guy. So let's, we need to move this stuff up. There we go. And now I'm going to take that group and just slide it pretty much all the way off the screen, just so it's like just hanging on. And then we can just fade it out by taking the opacity all the way down. So that's, we basically created the initial state of this left rail, right? So now we can kind of visualize the difference between those states and how it's going to animate. So it's going to start all the way here, fade it out, and it's going to fade in in this state. And it's going to, you know, be fully established in this dashboard one screen. So another thing that I want to happen is I want these previous and next buttons to maybe come in from the top. I think that would be kind of cool. Um, so again, let's take these guys, paste them here and create the initial state for those guys. So let's just bump them up. So they're just hanging on and we'll fade them out. So now when this user clicks on this guy, so let's create an interaction, hit C with this uh, topic selected, connect to dashboard one. And we can this time use motion and I think a 0.5 second duration is fine. Let's hit save and let's see what happens in the preview now. So let's reset this by hitting command R. So we hover over, hover out. Once we're hovered in, we can click and we get some cool animation occurring. So let's do that one more time. So the left rail enters the screen from the left and these guys kind of drop down and enter the screen. Let's see what else is happening. So it's a little funky with this video fading in and these guys fading out. But again, this is a low fidelity prototype, so I'm not gonna get too crazy with the motion design here. I just kinda wanna get the points across. One thing I think I can do though, I'm gonna delay these previous lesson and next lesson CTAs up top, um, just cause I think that would be a little easier for the user to take in if they're kind of staggered, what's the word, staggered. So like if the left rail comes in followed by these buttons, it's kind of orienting them to this first and then, then telling them, you know, we can go previous and next, we can use these buttons. I don't want both to come in at once because it's a bit overwhelming. So what I can do is with this guy selected, we head over to that interaction we just made. So you notice how there's two here because we have the mouse out as well. I wanna make sure we go into the click trigger, the click interaction that we just created and hit edit timeline. So now we're inside the edit timeline for that interaction we just made. And this is where we can really control the timing of these um, interactions. So with this previous lesson and next lesson selected, I'm just going to delay them a bit. So now they come in once this left rail is established. And I think it's a bit easier um, to follow for the user, kind of orients them a bit better. There we go. It's like showing there's two steps here. There's the left rail as well as the navigation here. So I think that's fine for now. Oh, and one other thing we can do that I forgot. Um, with this guy selected, let's go back to the edit timeline. So notice how both these elements are entering the screen, right? So this left rail and these buttons are sort of entering the screen. So originally they're sort of off the screen and then they enter the screen. Um, well, usually when objects enter a screen, we want to slow them down. We want to decelerate them. We want to kind of emulate real life when we're designing digital products, right? It's like, think about if you're running into a room, right? You're eventually going to reach a dead stop. Well, if you're starting running and you're ending at a dead stop, you have to slow yourself down, right? So it's the same thing when objects enter artboards. We actually want to decelerate them. So notice here though, the global easing right now. So the way these objects are moving, they're speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, and then slowing down. And that's kind of this ease both easing. We actually want to change this to ease out and that'll give us this deceleration curve. So we're slowing down over time. 
And since this is global easing, it's applying to all of the layers within this transition, which is fine. Um, you could also, you know, manually go in and change the easings for each of these specific layers, but I'm just going to do the global easing. And you're probably not going to notice a difference just because um, the total duration is only what? Uh, it's like 0.9 seconds with these guys delayed. Um, but it's just usually a more natural way of um, easing elements. Um, so yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, again, like in a case interview, you wouldn't have to know any of this really, but um, usually when you're designing digital product products and you're animating elements, just know objects that are entering the screen will decelerate and objects that leave screens, like say this guy was moving off the screen instead of on the screen, it would actually accelerate. So that graph would look more like ease in, which is this graph, but we're gonna change it back to ease out. So yeah, just wanted to show you guys that. The next interaction is gonna be from this screen to this screen. And basically a user is gonna click on this dropdown switch and we're gonna reveal the rest of the topics in this dropdown list. So let's just have the user click on, let's have them click on this down arrow and we'll target this screen. We'll trigger this with a click and this can be an instant transition. I don't have to add any crazy transitions here for this dropdown. Um, so let's hit save. And to get back, we'll just have the user click on that same one. He's not gonna actually switch his topics, but we'll just show you know what you could do. So again, that can be an instant transition. So in our preview, we click on the arrow and our dropdown options are revealed. This user could switch topics or you could just remain on this guy by clicking back. So cool, there's our drop down switch. And I believe that was a requirement of ours, right? We had to be able to seamlessly switch between topics. The next thing I wanna do is show what would happen when a user hits the play button. So I wanna simulate a video playing for a certain duration of time. So that's gonna be really easy to do. I'm just gonna duplicate this artboard by hitting Command D. And if you recall from the last video, I added this like progress bar across the bottom. It's just a rectangle that's gonna grow from left to right across the bottom here, just to simulate that a video is playing. But it's gonna be faded out in that initial state and kind of shrunk down all the way on the left side here. But then in this new state, remember we created a new state basically, because we're gonna create differences in these states. I'm just going to um, bring the opacity of it all the way back up. And we're going to bring it all the way to the other side. So this is gonna grow as this video plays. And another thing we can do is fade out this play button in this state. And we'll take this background rectangle and we'll just make it like a different color just to simulate like, you know, it's a different state than this guy just to show that, you know, even at this low fidelity stage, we wanted to make it seem like a video is playing, right? Like they started something, now it looks different than the initial state. So to trigger this, animation. Let's select the play button, create a link to dashboard two. Um, let's select motion and we'll give it a long duration. I think four seconds is fine. I just want to show that a video is playing. It's going to take a bit of time. So let's go to the edit timeline right off the bat. Since this is a video playing, um, videos play, um, at a constant rate, right? Just like a song plays at a constant rate, one second at a time. Um, a video will do the same thing. So we actually wanna change the easing here to linear because that's a more realistic representation of a video playing than a video easing in and out. So I'm just gonna hit spacebar to preview what we have already. So as you can see, um, we're gonna have to mess with the timing of, of a few of these layers to make it a little more realistic. So this background rectangle does not need to take four seconds to change color. Um, so let's just give myself some more space. So what's this layer called? Rectangle three. We can make that, um, we can make that animation occur really quickly. Same with this play button. So that can like fade out really quickly as well. So you see this thing is growing at the bottom. The problem is um, we have to change the, we have to make the opacity property not take as long. So let's, with this layer selected, let's drill down. You hit this little expand icon here and we will change the property now 
So this opacity property will change the duration to something much shorter. So there we go. So like right off the bat, that line becomes visible and it looks like a video is playing. Very cool. So let's preview from the top now. We can do our little drop down switch. We play the video and it looks like a video is playing. Awesome. All right, so I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Um, it's getting a little long. <laughs> I know we've already done five parts. I didn't think it would take this long, but um, in the next video, I'm gonna really wrap this up and I'm gonna show you how to meet our final two requirements. Remember, we still need to show what would happen when um, a user finishes a lesson because we need the next lesson to start automatically. So we kind of need to show that transition. And we also need to show the user what would happen um, when we complete all of the lessons within the topic. So we will cover those in the next video. I hope you guys are following along and taking some value from these videos. Um, if you guys have learned something, please let me know in the comments. Um, also, if you're interested in seeing you know, a specific interaction or if you have any recommendations for like what should happen next, that'd be really cool if you drop that below as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for all your support. Um, definitely subscribe for the next part and I'll talk to you guys soon.